most of the planet right now is stuck in judgment and we're seeing a lot of evil and we're judging everything to be evil and these elites are just evil and Satan and our government is evil and Satan and everything that's wrong and it's like okay have you not noticed that you're kind of waking up to a little bit of truth can you kind of figure out that everything you believed that was true isn't exactly as true as you thought it was so if you had beliefs that weren't necessarily true don't you think maybe just these elites these these really really wealthy people just have a belief that's wrong as well you know like maybe they're just not as evil as we think they are they're just lost in truth like you were lost in truth it it seems like the ones who know truth you know okay they're good in god but the ones that are lost with knowing what's true are evil and is it like is it really evil just to be a little lost is it really really evil just to have a belief that's not exactly true you know what what even drives anybody to find out truth it seems to be you know when it hits you when it hits you in the face and then you finally say oops I was wrong you know and then as soon as you figure out you're wrong then all of a sudden you have to form another belief so I mean where did did most of us go wrong where did we develop a lot of our beliefs that created this uh, wealth mentality that life is all about wealth and I look at back on on my history my genetics and what their experiences were because I'm sure all of us had parents that loved to tell us about their background and the stories that I heard were all about the Great Depression and I also was um, a foster mom and this foster child would always hoard food and I'm noticing that wealthy people and you know this child that was in a foster system had the same kind of beliefs going on had the same kind of mentality going on and it always came from an experience of poverty my parents were had this wealth mentality because they lived in a depression they lived through a time where there was no food I mean we don't even see what this is coming to I mean we're saying that we're in a depression and it's like okay I'm kinda glad people are starting to use the word depression instead of recession because recession kind of implies that we're gonna come out of something and at least depression means it's gonna get a little worse but we haven't seen a depression yet because when we see a depression there won't be any food there will be no flow of food and nobody will be able to afford food and even the food you eat is going to be a lot worse than than the last depression because we've poisoned our air and we've poisoned the ground we've poisoned everything so even the food you get isn't going to be healthy so you know we have not even seen the depression yet it's it's still on its way but are we gonna make a shift when we have no food are you only gonna change your mind and change your beliefs after you experience no food and you're dead because <laughs> that's the prediction you know is that uh, you're all gonna be dead <laughs> if we don't change our ways and I suppose the the main purpose of this video is be really really aware of the poverty you're living into because the poverty how you handle your poverty is going to dictate what the solutions are going to be in our future um, from this foster child you know the the being deprived 
gave him the mentality that I may be deprived again in the future, so I need to save. So if there was always extra food, he'd be hoarding the food because he'd be always looking for that rainy day where there will be no food. And he just didn't spend time enjoying his life. He just didn't enjoy, you know, the, you know, you have food, don't worry about it. Just focus on today and the happiness you can have today. But his obsessive behaviors ended up making him lose the home that he was living in because... He ended up remembering too many of the hard times and was starting to be violent. The violence that he was experienced on him, he now was turning into the violence that he hated. My parents, you know, hated the depression. So they, you know, are into saving their money, you know, and got to invest and they're losing all their investments because they didn't even know what was a good idea to invest in and they didn't enjoy their life they were so busy trying to earn money that they didn't know how to enjoy their life so they both were very depressed people they both you know raised kids in you know while they thought that they were going to raise their kids to have everything that they didn't have um, they didn't know how to enjoy their kids. They didn't know how to have fun with their family. They didn't know how to uplift and make them feel like they were special. They always were, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good. And it's like, it's like, what did that work for you? So what I'm learning from the personal depression financial experience that I'm having is to enjoy the process. I'm not gonna hate not having any money. I'm not gonna hate being bored as hell. I'm gonna find something that I love about this experience. You know, and, and I'm kind of suggesting that, you know, if you are lacking money, if you are lacking, you know, having enough, find something good about it. Find something that you can enjoy about it. There's there's a reason, there's a lesson in there for you to experience. Because if you're going to live in this experience with a great deal of hate, then your solution in the future is going to create more and more things that you hate. So what are the things that I'm loving about this experience? It's giving me time to sort of reflect on myself. It's giving me time to do some research. It's giving me time to make these videos. Um, could I get trapped into the um, ability to attract a great deal of wealth? Hell yeah. I mean, right now we kind of need some direction. You know, we need some new information. We need some motivational speakers that are a little different than what we've got. We need some ideas on, you know, where to spend money. I mean, I really do think that the information I have has a potential to earn a very, very high income for myself one day. So I always, you know, while I'm living in this poverty, I'm really kind of reflecting, okay, if I did get some money, what would I spend it on? You know, I'm, I'm kind of against, you know, buying clothes at big chains that have, you know, the latest fashions. I love, 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 love fashion. You know, I could get caught up into the game of having, you know, great wealth and having that big house. I would love a nice house. I would love a new car. I would love everything that I happen to hate in, you know, seeing that this is what's creating our poverty. You know, like, I would, I, you know, so I'm kind of trapped in this insanity that okay if I was financially successful would I then turn into what it is that I hate the most would I turn into that rich guy would I turn into buying stuff that I would get caught up in and you know that being in this poverty has really given me time to really reflect on what would I do with money if I ended up attracting money? And part of it is, is to really, really enjoy what it feels like to live in poverty and to make sure 
that anything I do in my future does not put people in a depression state that doesn't take advantage of people so we create a slavery. I have to really reflect on myself to make sure that okay while I'm really believing in myself and while I really believe that you know this welfare system isn't exactly the way to go there's got to be a, a better way of earning a living you know to, to receive the abundance receive everything that you know sustains my personal life has to be done in a different way than a welfare system kind of really really against that so if I was to attract a, you know a different way of being successful what would it do to me how would I repeat how would I fall into everything that I possibly hate so these are the kinds of things that I go through when I'm living in um, this financially depressed situation that I'm finding on. I'm, I'm trying as hard as I can not to hate the experience, otherwise I'll turn into that. I'm trying to really be um, aware that I, the possibility of getting caught up in the same trap that I'm against. And the more I'm experiencing this, the more it's giving me the, yeah, just make sure you're not part of the problem. Just make sure at all times you don't create what it is that you're actually warning everybody about. And um, it is about just finding enjoyment without having anything. You know, it's how can you put a smile on your face without having anything? You know, how, how can you create a life that's worth living without having any stuff? And so this time of, of this depression is, is my awakening. It's my time for me to find out what is really, really important. It's my time for me to really ingrain new rules, ingrain new awareness about myself ingrain me with the trappings that I may be tempted in my future so that it doesn't happen to me. It doesn't mean that there's, you know, not a great future out there for me to enjoy. It just means that I need to be extremely aware of where it is that I'm going and what it is that I want to create. So anybody that is, uh, you know, going into their financial depression, don't go in it with hate. Go go in it with, you know, love and joy and try and figure out, okay, what's good about this? How can I enjoy my life? How can I develop friendships? How can I make every minute happy without stuff? Because it's the stuff that's creating your unhappiness. It's, it's destroying our friggin' planet. So we do need to find a way of just feeling happy without stuff. Because when you find your solution, you might have that temptation to go for the stuff again. And that's just friggin' insane. Don't you think? <laughs> Peace out.